In the last video we did, uh, I showed how to do the, the tooling, the carving, the basket weave stamping, all of that, and uh, had to wait after that for it to dry completely before I could do any dyeing, uh, which is what we're going to do now. We're going to do the dyeing. So uh, first step is I've got parts here. This is a, a black uh, solvent dye, uh, Feebing's, regular Feebing's uh, leather dye. I keep it in a small bottle like that because it's easier to be dipping the brush in and out of. Okay, so it's black dye, but when we go over all of this later on, it ends up looking just like dark brown. All right, so I've got all of this to do black. This here is going to be black. And all of this is going to be black. All right. Uh, this this dye is is very thin, very liquidy, and part of it is knowing how to work with how to go with the flow. Let's say uh, you want enough dye on your brush. So see how that flows, uh, but not so much that it might accidentally drip somewhere where you don't want it. Um, if you let it get too dry, I'll uh, work this out so that it gets work some of the dye off it and show you what happens if you're if it's too dry and not flowing you got to work harder at it you got to keep going over it and over it like so and getting it whereas if if you've got the right amount of dye it just kind of flows into into the cuts and all that which is what we want okay um in order to have control, when you're dealing with with a, a real small area like this, this beading, uh, in order to have control, you want, first of all, choke up on the brush and have the brush kind of hovering above the material. So you have to come down to it, all right, like so. And that way, I'm not saying it's easy. I've been doing this for 50 years, but it's easier. And here you don't want too much dye on the brush because it'll just bleed out and go places you don't want it. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be painting this part in also. All right. Now, when you're holding the brush, you can't help but it being at a certain angle. So I don't want the angle to be such that it, it flows into parts you don't want. So I'm going over this just at the top of that. And then what I'll do is I'll reverse the, the direction in order to get here. So I'm leaning away from it to get that without going places I don't want to go. So again, when I'm doing this, it's important that you um, have the brush hovering above there and then you just bring it down to the, the raised carved portion. Uh, also important is, again, that whole idea of, you know, the, the brush is going to lean a certain way. So just be sure that you're holding it where it's not going to... Uh, to paint something that you didn't want painted. So our next step, uh, these areas that are not painted in at all are going to come out one shade. The basket weave tooling, I want to be a lighter shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over that with a wax resist. Uh, that's this Echo Flow. I'm not even sure if it's still available. Uh, last time I tried to order it, I couldn't get it. 
but um, neutral leather balm will do the same thing. It will resist the dye. Okay, so for a large area, I'll use this wool dauber and get the, the bulk of it. And then at the edges, I'll use a brush to get in close. Okay, so I've let the, uh, the wax resist dry. We're going to dye this all now, both inside and out. Um, what I'm using for that is this Feebing's Antique Leather Dye. Unfortunately, they don't make it anymore. I happen to have a good stash of it. I'm very fortunate in that respect. But chances are, unless you've got some, you're not going to be able to find it. Uh, what I found works pretty much as well as the Feebing's Vintage Gel. Um, but um, I'm using the antique leather dye, which I've transferred into this bottle because it's easier to work from that than this wide mouth jar. So uh, you definitely want to be wearing gloves when you do that. And I apply it with a piece of sheep's wool. Um, a, a rag doesn't work. You know, cloth rag, you can do it with a sponge, but sheep's wool is what I've been using for 50 some years, and that's what works the best. I start with the inside first, the, the flesh side, which soaks up a lot more of the dye than, than the top grain, but got to get it done. I like to do the entire inside because that way if you happen to be looking down inside the holster it all looks finished. It's not not kind of half done. I don't have to do these edges because that's what's going to get glued and if I dyed the edges I only have to sand it away anyhow so um, so that's the inside you really got to work it in and get your fingers digging in around the tooling to make sure you get every bit of it. You can see where the uh, wax resist is doing its thing, keeping that part lighter. Using a circular motion like this, you, you don't get it streaked as much. Uh, if you just go back and forth like so, you get a more of a streaked effect, which actually looks like wood grain when you're done. A lot of people like that, and I like it, uh, but sometimes I don't want it. You have to decide what kind of finish you want. That's pretty much it. I got to let that dry and uh, then I'll dye the edges with uh, oh, it's called burnishing ink or edge dye whatever um, and then I'll go over the whole thing with leather balm. Once it's all dry go over the whole thing with the leather balm, uh, buff it up and then the dyeing process is done. Um, and a, once I let this dry and, and do that you'll see what that all looks like. 
Okay, so the next step is I just need to dye the edges here. Uh, and this is what I'm using. It's uh, called burnishing ink. Uh, I learned about that when I was in the shoe repair business. Uh, it, it'll dye the edge. It also polishes up really nice. It's got wax in it. And again, I've transferred it into a smaller container that's much easier to work out of. This burnishing ink is something that is not readily available through most leather supply companies, uh, but it is through um, shoe repair supply houses. Uh, or if you can't find one of them, just go to go to a shoe repair shop and see if they'll sell you a, a small container. Bring a bottle with you to fill up and see if they'll do that. A little bit of this will last a long, long time. Okay, I don't have to do these edges here because that's going to be sewn and then um, ground, finished off, and, and we'll, we'll dye the edges at that point. But right now, that's all I need to do. Okay, so again, we're waiting for that to dry, and uh, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so this is dry now. Our next step is we're just going over it with a leather balm. And uh, this just is something that um, brings out more of a luster. I could buff this right now, but the leather balm just adds something to it. It's a, a wax and uh, just comes out looking a whole lot better. I do the, uh, the inside too. Um, I mean, the, the belt loop portion is, is actually going to show. And uh, I just do the whole inside as well. And that's about it. We just have to wait for that to dry. And then we'll buff the whole thing up. And that portion of the job will be done. Okay, so this is dry now. So the next step is we're going to buff it. Now, I'm fortunate that I happen to have this rig here to buff things with and to grind stuff and all that. Uh, so I'm going to do part of it with that. But I'm also going to do some of it with a rag to show you that you can just as easily and just as effectively... Uh, do it with a rag. Okay, so we'll start with this here. Okay, this is where it all just comes to life. I mean, this just makes such a difference buffing it up. You can see here's the part that's been buffed, as opposed to this here, which is not as bright and shiny. Uh, it just does a beautiful job. Okay, I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to do the rest of it with a rag to show you that you can do just as well without having a, a buffing wheel like that. Okay, any soft rag will do. I mean, if you look at that right now, you can't tell the difference between which part I did on the buffing wheel and which part I'm doing with a rag. And there it is. All dyed, buffed up, and ready to put together. And that's what we'll do in the next video. Uh, I'd just like to take a minute to also thank Jill, who's done a wonderful job of helping me 
uh, record these videos. Uh, she's been great, and I really appreciate her.